Good morning. Good morning. Glad you are here today. Glad you weren't at the first service because we had the we had the offensive unit of the MSU football team at the first service, and we didn't have room for you. They took about it was about four persons to a row, and uh, if the if the middle section here is sagging, it just it there, there were some big boys here. That that was, but we did have a good time, and it was an honor that they they would come and be with us. We have a lot going up on ourselves though uh, this week. Back to school blessing of the backpacks on Wednesday night. We'll, we'll have dinner, and please sign up if you'd like to come to dinner. But then at 6 o'clock, we will have the children come and bring their backpacks, and we will pray over them, pray over the beginning of the new school year. And that's a very special thing that we do, and we're looking forward to that. We're also collecting items for uh, our Backpack Buddies ministry, and you can read about that in the bulletin as well. And we'd be glad to receive items for that as well. So uh, a lot going on Wednesday night. A uh, lot of other things going on. A lot going on today. From 1 to 3 today in the, uh, in the fellowship hall, John Frazier is having his 90th birthday party. And so you are invited to that, and I'm sure there'll be cake. And then at 4 o'clock this afternoon, we're going to have our uh, kind of little welcome ice cream social for our new children's director, Katrin McKinney. So we'll have cake and ice cream this afternoon. You cannot beat that, uh, especially on a day like today. So much else going on. I do want to thank everyone who made cookies for the uh, Starkville Police Department's uh, night out program. We had a really good response to that. We had a lot of fun, met a lot of people, gave away a lot of cookies, and they were very good. In fact, had people taking orders for their, we, I wanna know who made those so I can order some more of those. They were, they were excellent. But I do appreciate everyone who helped us support the uh, night out, the church and the night out for the police department. Uh, do have a bit of sad news. Uh, most of y'all heard that Elaine Bost has passed away. And uh, her service is tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock at the church. You didn't, didn't have time to make the paper this morning. So Elaine's visitation will be tomorrow morning starting about 9.30. And the, the, uh, the service itself will be here in the sanctuary at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, Elaine, of course, Bill, they were, they were such important members of this church. And for, for many, many years, we, we were trying to count up how long they'd been a member of this church. But a very, very sweet, sweet person. And that service will be tomorrow. There is a lot else going on as we get going in this new year. And so please take note of all the different things that are happening in the bulletin. We do have a, uh, uh, a candle in honor of uh, Mary Scott Skelton. And uh, they were new members of our church. And she was just born. Saw her this morning. So uh, just great to have new life coming into our church. Even, even as we say goodbye to old friends. But glad that you are here today. Glad to have some of our college students back. And we'll be kind of have a full-fledged college student Sunday next Sunday. But glad to have the folks back from vacation, back from college. Glad that you are here today. Please take time to sign the attendance pads that we might have a record of you being here. And now will you take your bulletin and stand as we turn to our call to worship. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord. Let your ears be attentive. To the voice of my supplication. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word I hope. Most gracious God, we come here with a spirit of excitement. We come here with a spirit of hope. Bless this service. Bless this time we have together. For we are here in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. The hymn of praise is number 66. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Number 66.
please remain standing as we share our faith together through the Apostles' Creed. And may we unite in this historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose to the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's have a time of prayer. Most good and gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your Son, and we thank you for all the ways in which your love is poured down on us. We thank you for this new school year and all the excitement, all the joy that it brings. And we ask your special blessing upon the children who, who are starting school this week and who've already started school, the, the newcomers who are coming into town, the folks who are just getting back into their studies. We ask a special blessing upon the teachers, the coaches, cafeteria workers, the bus drivers, even the superintendents. We, we, we ask that you be with everyone who works with our schools in some capacity. Give them patience. Give them wisdom. Fill them with love and hope that they, they might guide our children because they have so much contact with them. They have so much influence on our lives that we ask your special blessing upon them that they may truly be 
your agents of love and peace and wisdom in our schools. Be with them as we start this new school year. Be with all of us as we go forward. We have some folks in our church who, who've lost a loved one just in very recent days. We have some folks who are in the hospital recovering from a, an illness, an injury. We have some who are getting ready to start their treatments. We have some who are waiting for the surgery. We have people at, at all stages of, of getting ready for something or recovering from something. They all need your strength. They all need your power. Help them to know how much we love them, how much we want to lift them up. But help them to feel your presence. Help them to feel a real power working in them as they get well. Be their courage. Be their strength. Be their forgiveness. Be their healing. Be with all of us as we go out into this world. Help us to go out as true disciples of your Son. It's in His name that we are here today. It's in His name that we pray. As we pray the prayer He taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's time for our children with Miss Catherine. Good morning, everyone. Oh, y'all don't sound too excited to be here. Um, <laughs> who can tell me what we did during Sunday school? What, what's so special about this Sunday? Do y'all remember? That's right, it's Promotion Sunday. And that means, which y'all have already gone through, is that we have moved y'all up to the next grade level. <laughs> oh, come on, you can come over here. Um, and so we moved up to the next grade level in Sunday school. And how many, I know Sunday school is a little different than regular school because you typically know, hello, typically know everybody and know your teachers. But sometimes when you go to a new grade, you don't know your teachers or even who's in your class. And I know I was scared of that. Have y'all ever been nervous or scared of starting a new school year? It can be really scary sometimes. But the really awesome thing about us being scared is that even if we are scared, God's with us. And no matter what happens, whether it's good or bad, we had a little girl who said it was bad one time this morning, but most of the time it's really good um, and good things happen. And that's because God's always with us no matter what. So, okay, we're gonna pray and I would like y'all to repeat after me as we pray, okay? Ready? Dear God, thank you so much for letting us be here today. And thank you for letting us be able to move on to the next level. And please be with us, whether we're scared or nervous. And we know you are great. We love you a lot. Amen. Okay, and I'd like to ask the first graders to stay up here. Everyone else can go back to their seats. Brody, stay up here. <laughs> John David, do you want to come up? So we have just three. Mm -hmm. Well, today is a really special day. Besides it being Promotion Sunday, we are also handing out Bibles. Here, y'all want to stand? Y'all can stand if y'all want. Um, to our first graders. Um, and so they can start the process of reading on their own and just seeing what God's Word is all about. <laughs> Um, and we have a Bible for you, John David, and for Colt, and for Brody. And I hope y'all use it as much as I used mine when I got one when I was y'all's age. So they're already using it. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Here, y'all can go back to your seats and to your family. Zero. Help us accept each other. Number 560. Let's stand and sing together.
people. We are thankful people. Accept these our gifts. We bring them in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated. We've been reading in Ephesians, so now we're in the fourth chapter, picking up at verse 25. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly for their, with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Gospel Jubilee 2015 will take place on Sunday, August the 23rd. Subtitled Camp Meeting in the City, it's going to be a high energy, fun-filled afternoon. 
The uh, first presentation will take place at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and there are fewer than 40 tickets remaining for that. So if you want one, see Martha Ruth Parvin over here at the piano just after the service. We are also starting a waiting list for a possible 5 o'clock presentation. When we get 150 names on that list, we'll consider doing a second <laughs> program at 5 o'clock. Um, you'll, you'll need to have a ticket. They're free. You'll need to have a ticket, and you'll want to have a ticket, so be sure to get one. A one, two. Last Wednesday, I met with some of our rising high school seniors, and we had lunch, and talked about their senior year, and talked about how they were going to be the leaders of the youth group this year. And I was trying to get them around to this question of, of what are you going to do to make a difference this year? So I gave them a challenge. I gave them $50, and I told them to go out and do some good with it. And they immediately left, and I haven't seen any of them since then. Uh, no, no. But I did. I, I, I gave them a $50 bill, and they were pretty impressed with that. And they, they, I told them to go out and do something with it. They could give it to someone in need. They could buy some tools and go work on a Habitat house. They could buy books and go read to children. But I told them to, to come up with some ideas, and they talked about some ideas, and they're thinking about it. And they'll each have to decide what they're going to do with that money. Now, I asked them to use it to do some good, but not just to put it in an envelope and send it off to some charity, but to use it in a way that, that gets them involved, but good, do that in a way that, that makes them part of the process. And uh, it's going to be interesting. We're we calling it the Senior Project. This is the very first time we've done this, so we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, uh, Brandon and, and uh, Emily are saying, why didn't you give us the money? Well, I don't, well I'm sorry. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I, I, I did it to challenge them. I did it to teach them a little bit about stewardship and a little bit about responsibility. I did it to make them look around their own community and see what needs are right here in Starkville, in Octibaha County, that they might get help with. But mostly I did it to help them see how they, being 17, 18 years old, with just a little bit startup and their own gifts and their own graces, can do something that will make a difference in their school, in their church, 
in their neighborhood, in their hometown. And I have faith that it will not all be spent on pizza and video games, but we'll see. But I will keep you informed as the year goes along. We're going to, have, we're going to check in with them now and again. And what I hope is that we'll come to the end of this year and we're going to have a banquet. And we're going to let the seniors, the class of 16, tell what they have done this year. And then they are going to pass on $50 to the class of 17 and challenge them in the same way. That's what I hope they're going to do. Now, I'm not going to give you $50 this morning. But I will ask you, what are you going to do to make a difference in the coming year? It is like it's a, it's a brand new year. You know, being in a college town where so much revolves not just around the university but around school in general, this is like a new year. This is Promotion Sunday. And I was one of those who was very scared. I, I worried about Promotion Sunday as a little child. I worried that I might miss Promotion Sunday and not know where to go to Sunday school the next week, even though the next class was just one class down the hallway. It, it worried me to no end. But regular school starts tomorrow. Some of our kids have already started school, but mo a lot of them will start tomorrow. And so we, we, we pray for them and pray for their teachers. You know, MSU has another week to go. So I told the, the uh, football team that they could just rest and lounge around this week. And they laughed, and the coaches laughed an evil laugh when I said that. Uh, 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 yeah, right. But it is exciting to have a sense of newness around this time, to have a new school year. All the fresh people that are showing up this year and clogging up Walmart. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot going on. There's a new football season. There's a new volleyball season. There's a new soccer season. Maybe we'll keep our fingers crossed. There's a little cooler weather on the way. It is a brand new year. And so the question is, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to make a difference in it? And it's an important question for everyone. But it's an especially important question for those who claim to follow Jesus Christ. Because for all of us, it's real easy to get to that place where we think, well, okay, I'm here. I've got it made. I, I've done what I need to do. I don't need to do anymore. And it can happen to any of us. We get to that point. Something good has happened and we think, I've made it. I've graduated high school. I've graduated college. I've finished that dissertation. I've made the team. I got that job. I've been saved. Wow. I'm here. That's it. And all those are big deals. And all of those things that we should take note of. But none of those things are ends in and of themselves. Any of them, all of them should lead us to ask, okay, here I am. I've got this. Now what do I do with it? What do I do next? That's kind of like what Paul is talking about at the end of Ephesians. We've been talking about this, we've been talking about Ephesians for a couple of weeks now, and, and I'll give a brief catch up for those who just got back from vacation. Ephesians starts off with Paul talking about all the good things God has done for us. In fact, Paul is at his most, most uh, lavish with his words because he's talking about how lavish God is with his grace and how much God has done for us and how much God is doing for us. And, and that's just the way he starts off. This is how the first chapter kind of starts off. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Christ Jesus, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed upon us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he has lavished upon us. And uh, as he's celebrating all this, he goes on to say, you know, God has poured out his love. He's poured out his grace. And in the second chapter, he reminds us what that means to us as individuals. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, dead in our sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come 
he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And, and he, he's talking about all these wonderful things that God has done for us. And he reminds us that we didn't earn any of this. God didn't give it to us because we were so nice or we were so special. God did it because God loved us. And God did it because God loved us at a time when we were doing everything we could to make ourselves less than lovable. But God loved us anyway and did so much for us. And he reminds us this, for by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one may boast. All right. God loves us already. Our salvation is not something that we earn, but it is a gift of God that we receive, that we tapped into by faith. We didn't do any good works to earn God's love, and that's okay because God loved us, and God had already sent His Son. But that doesn't mean we just sit around and bask in the glow of it. It means we do something with it. And that's what Paul is trying to tell us in the second half of the letter. We still ought to do something. We still ought to do something in response. We still ought to do something to say thank you. We still are supposed to do something with what we've been given. It's like you get a diploma and you have a big graduation and you put that diploma in the frame and you just stand there and let the, the wonder of it pour over you, how, how great you are, how smart you are, whether it's a high school diploma or college or your PhD. But you can't just stand around in that glow forever. Somewhere along the line, you need to put it to work. You need to use what you've learned. You need to build on what you've learned. You need to get a job. I'll tell some of the parents are saying, yes, amen to that. Uh, you need to do something with it. It's like you make the team. And it's a big deal to make the team that you've gotten a jersey, you've gotten a scholarship, you are on the team. It's a big deal, it should be celebrated. But that celebration can only go on so long either. Making the team is just the start. Then you've gotta practice, you've gotta study, you've gotta earn your playing time, you've gotta earn your start, you've gotta get better, you've gotta help the team get better, you've gotta help the team win, you've gotta become the best that you can be. Once again, you've been given something. So do something with it. And it's the same even with gifts that we didn't earn. Someone gives us a gift. We don't just let it sit there and not unwrap it, not open it, not use it, not wear it, not do whatever it is we're supposed to do with it. It doesn't do us any good. It doesn't do the giver any good either for us just to let it sit there in a box, unopened and unused, if we ignore it, if we don't use it. Christians as Paul says, have been given so much. And so much of what we've been given, we haven't earned, we haven't deserved it. We got it because God loves us. We got it because Jesus Christ was willing to die for us. But even if we didn't earn the gift, we still ought to do something with it. We ought to live out our lives. We ought to do good things. We ought to be the best people we can be. We ought to be the best whatever we can be as a response as a way of saying thank you to the God who gave us so much. Paul says it better than I can. Paul says it in Ephesians, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. He says we're supposed to keep on growing all of our lives until we all reach the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. You've heard me say before, you're born again but you're born again as baby Christians and you're supposed to grow. And that's exactly what Paul says right here. Then we will no longer be infants. We'll no longer be baby Christians tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is the Christ. He says, we're supposed to grow. We've been saved, we've been made new, we've been forgiven, but now we are supposed to grow more and more like the example of Christ. And then he sums it up even more directly. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love 
as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Be imitators of God. That, setting the bar pretty high, that is setting a high standard. For three chapters, Paul has basically been talking about how much God loves you and all that God has done for you. And then he comes back to say, if you really believe in God, if you really believe God loves you, if you really believe God has done all this for you, then it ought to show. It ought to make a difference in your life. It, it ought to be that you want to do something in response. It ought, to want to make, it ought to make you want to be a better person. It ought to make you want to be the very best you can be. And it ought to turn you into someone who will make a difference in the world because Jesus Christ has made a difference in your life. And that's the challenge to all of us, young, old, and in between. Not just to rest on our laurels. Not just to be satisfied with the way things are. Not just to get to a place that, okay, I'm here. I can stop. I'm good enough. Not ever to think, hey, I've got it made. Not ever to think, hey, I'm done. It's a challenge to all of us to figure out how do we say thank you for all the good that God has done for us and all the good that others have done for us as well. How do we figure out how to use the gifts that we've been given? How do we figure out how are we going to make a difference? So how are you? What are you going to do to make a difference this year? What are you going to learn? We've got a lot of students of all sorts here today, but I'm talking to everyone because you never stop learning. I, I, I should say you should never stop learning. Yes, yeah, some people get to about the, well, different points and they just stop. <laughs> you should never, ever stop learning. So what are you going to learn this year that helps you do your job better? What are you going to learn this year that helps you understand God's world and God's people better? What are you going to do this year to understand yourself better? What are you going to learn this year to help you know God better? What are you going to do to make yourself better? How are you going to use, train, develop the gifts and abilities that you already have? Whatever it is you are, whatever it is you do, how are you going to work to get better this year? And how are you going to make those around you better? Not all of us gets to be on the football team, but none of us, none of us stands alone. We are all members of teams, families, classes, churches, work crews, whatever. We're all part of some gathering of people together for a purpose. And so the question is not just what are you, are you going to do your part, not just how are you going to get better, but what are you going to do to lift, to encourage, to teach, to pull along, to push from behind, to do whatever you can to make those around you better, to make your team, your group, your family, your crew better. And then what are you going to do to be a better person? Every one of us has room for improvement. God loves you because he loves you and not because you are so irresistibly perfect. God meets everyone where they are. But God has no intention of leaving you wherever, they, wherever God found you. God wants to lift you up. God wants to help you grow. God wants you to discover what is the very best you can be. And so what are you going to do to study yourself, to look for the paths that God lays before you, to take the opportunities and the challenges that are there? How, what are you going to do to become the person God knows you can be. If you do those things, if you try to learn something, if you try to get better at what you do, if you try to make those people around you better, if you try just to be a better person, then you will find a way. You will be making a difference. You will be making a difference in your home, in your church, in your school, at your job, wherever you are. Everyone in this room has been blessed in many ways. We don't all have the same gifts. We don't all need the same gifts, just as the, the football team doesn't need to be made up of all quarterbacks. That just would not make any sense. But every one of us has some gift, 
have some ability, have some talent, have some circumstance. We've been blessed with so many things, talents and abilities, love, support, encouragement, opportunities and challenges. And now we've been given this brand new school year. How are you going to respond? What are you going to do with it? How are you going to make a difference this year? That's what I challenged our seniors. But I challenge every one of you to think about that question. What are you going to do to make a difference this year? Let us pray. Most good and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the opportunities to make differences. And we thank you for all the ways in which you've blessed our lives. Help us. Help us to discover our skills, to develop our skills, to use our skills, to use all the gifts you give us to be true followers of your Son, your agents, your difference makers in this world. We pray in the name of Jesus our Christ. Amen. As always, we open the doors of this church to any of you part of this church family. We'd be glad to welcome you. Hymn of invitation is number 384, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. Number 384, let's stand and sing. that all of you are here to share in this service this morning. Remind you, that next week will be our college student Sunday. We'll start back our college Sunday school class. We will have lunch for our college students after the, uh, after the 11 o'clock service next Sunday. We're going to have the steel drum band playing next Sunday. It will be a special day. But we're glad that you were here today. May God bless you as you go in peace, knowing that the love of God your Father, grace to His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the power and the comfort of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. Thank you.